What causes inflation and what should be done about it? Well, in this case, um, I mean, there's different, different things have caused different inflations. In this case, a, a huge driver of it was the COVID crisis, where, you know, uh, in economy after economy in the world, the, the orders were go home and don't go to work. And in, in the U.S. economy, what happened was like, said, don't go to work. And here's some money to survive, right? So that's going to increase demand while decreasing supply, and that drives up prices. And that 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 also, you know, led to bottlenecks in supply chains, right? So they closed the commercial driving license schools for two years. You can, you know, you can study literature online asynchronously like whatever read but you cannot learn to drive an 18 wheeler online you have to go to driving school for that right and so uh there's a shortage of of truck drivers and you know uh lots of truck drivers it's a very difficult job and it has been degraded badly and so you know in the midst of the pandemic people dying everyone taking stock you know like like lots of truck drivers quit who were close to the end of their uh, jobs, you then will have this, I mean, the enormous amounts of stimulus that were dumped into the U.S. economy. At first, there's this tremendous crash in the, uh, you know, in the spring of, of 2020, but then the recovery starts and stocks go way, way up. So then there's like, you know, you can imagine like a 56-year-old truck driver. It's a miserable job. At first, they're panicked that their small retirement has collapsed, but then they start saying, oh, it's coming up again. And so they're like, I'm out of here. Forget it. Right. So there's, that creates bottlenecks. That's just one example, truck drivers. You could do this throughout the economy in, in similar and different ways. So it's, the, it's these kind of contradictory um, forces of, you know, telling workers not to go to work and then giving them money to consume. And I mean, I'm not against that at all. I'm all in favor of that. And, and Actually, you know, it should be said one of the one of the only really good things, in my view, that came out of the the COVID response was the increase in unemployment benefits, their, the extension of their length, and the increase in the amount given, and the the stimulus checks. And it's a measure of how poor the American working class is that that little bit of aid led to an increase in the personal savings rate. I mean, people are so poor and they work so hard for such little money that even those paltry, uh, you know, th- that, that paltry bit of aid for people actually drove the, uh, the, the, the personal savings rate up to 8%. I figured what it was, it was down like, you know, basically like to, at zero or something like that. So, so that, that's what did it. 